G'day, welcome to another curriculum burst. Here's a curious geometry slash algebra question for high school students. It goes as follows. Brenda and Sally run in opposite directions on a circular track, starting at diametrically opposite points. They first meet after Brenda has run 100 metres. They next meet after Sally has run 150 metres, past their first meeting point. Each girl runs at a constant speed. What is the length of the track in metres? OK, all right, I'm pausing there. That was, that was a lot to take in. I need to go through it again. Um, Brenda and Sally run in opposite directions on a circular track. Sure, I can draw a circular track. That's fine. Starting at diametrically opposite points. So maybe Sally starts there, Brenda starts there. Uh, they first meet after, it, after Brenda has run 100 metres. So they go in opposite directions. So maybe Sally goes this way, Brenda goes this way. And they meet at some point when Brenda has gone 100 metres. And Sally's gone whatever that is. All right. Um, they next meet after Sally has run 150 metres, Sally, past their, past their first meeting point. So Sally keeps going and she runs another 150 metres to get to some point over here. So this is Sally going an extra 150 metres. And Brenda, I guess, keeps going this way. And they meet over yonder. They each run at constant speed. OK. And what is the length of the track? Well, that's annoying because I've got 100 metres here and sort of an overlapping 150 metres going the other way. I want the length of the whole track. OK, that seems hard. Um, all right, what can I do? Uh, well, I don't think I have enough information here. I need to know the speeds of the girls, don't I? Um, all, right, all right, let's do this. They met at some time. Suppose they meet here after t1 seconds. So then I could say that Brenda ran 100 metres in t1 seconds. So Brenda's speed, Brenda's velocity is 100 metres over t1 seconds, whatever t1 is. Um, Mm, okay, what can I do now? Uh, I don't even know that's helpful. Hmm. Well, okay, then after maybe they'll meet after another t2 seconds, so t2 seconds later, so it's t2 seconds later, um, Sally runs 150 meters. So I could say that uh, Sally's velocity is 150 meters in t2 seconds. I don't know if this is helpful. Um, in fact, I don't, actually, I don't think it is helpful at all. I've got four unknowns, Brenda's speed, Sally's speed, time one and time two, in just with two, just two equations. I can't solve that. Not enough information. What do we want? We want, we want the length of the track in meters. So I haven't even attended to that at all. All right, all right, all right. Let's call the length P for perimeter. Maybe we could have done C for circumference. Oh, oh, so look at this. I can see. In this first T1 seconds, yes, Brenda runs 100 meters, and Sally runs uh, half the perimeter minus 100 meters. So I could say that Sally's velocity is also uh, half the perimeter minus 100 meters in T1 seconds. Getting more equations. All right, and then now I've got um, I do the same thing for Sally. In T2, uh, Brenda, sorry, for T2 seconds, Sally runs 150 meters in T2 seconds, got that. But Brenda runs uh, the full circumference minus that 150 meters in T2 seconds. So Brenda's velocity is also the full circumference minus 150 over T2 seconds. Now I've got four equations in five unknowns. Oh, this is impossible. This seems, this seems nightmarish. In fact, maybe I could plow my way through this algebra. Maybe something happens nice that gets me the value of p. But this seems like hard work. I want to do strategy number nine, avoid hard work. What am I missing? What, could I, what else can I think through here? Um, so in t1 seconds, Sally does this and Brenda does that. And another t, ah, another t2 seconds, together they do that. In time t1, the girls together cover half the track. In time t2, the girls together travel the whole track. And they're all moving at constant speeds. I bet now, oh, this is beautiful. Constant speeds. In their combined speed, they can cover half the track in t1 seconds. With their combined constant speeds, they can travel the full track in t2 seconds. t2 must be twice as long as t1. That's it. t2 is double the time of t1. Now, I'm sure I could use that to solve these equations algebraically, but maybe I can just sit back and think my way through that. If t2 is double t1, there must be something about these numbers 100 and 150 I could use to my advantage now. I think there's hope for this question. And if that doesn't work out, I'm just thinking fanciful thoughts right now. I could always now go back to the algebra, because now I'll have five equations and five unknowns. So I should be able to get what p is. Great. All right. I like this mulling idea better for the moment. So maybe you should mull on this too. Can you figure out what the length of the circular track is, what p is, 
from now knowing that time t2 is double time t1 using the information down here. Give it a go. Give it a try. Think about it. And when you think of an answer, compare the answer I present in the essay that goes to this video. Let's, let's compare notes. Huh, super stuff. Thank you. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.